Once SK2 is installed and I have created any necessary control maps for the controller devices I wish to use with SK2, I can run the main SmartKnobs2 Lua script from within Reaper to begin using SK2. But first off, I will check that the input ports used by my controller devices are set to control only. When I start using SK2 for the first time, or start it in a project that has not previously been set up with SK2, I will always see the Settings dialog screen. This screen provides all the options for setting up SK2 to work with the Reaper project. The top list box lists all my MIDI input ports. In here, I select the MIDI input ports used by the controllers I wish to be mapped in SK2. I have two devices I wish to use with SK2, an X-Touch and an Extender. So I will scroll down the list to first find the input port associated with my X-Touch. I will left click on that port to highlight it orange. You will notice the number towards the right of the row, 1. This signifies the device map the port will use. And so I will leave it at 1 for the X-Touch, so it will be designated as device 1. I will then left click on the extender port, but for this port I will designate it to device 2. I will do exactly the same process for the output ports, the ports that will transfer MIDI feedback data, back to the controller. Select the output port to the X-Touch and ensure it is set to device 1. Then select the output port to the extender and set this to device 2. The next section shows the device slots, where I will assign the appropriate control map for each device. In the device 1 slot, I will select the X-Touch X-Control 2 control map, which is a control map that works with the X-Touch when it is in X-Control mode. In the device 2 slot, I will select the X-Touch Extender Control Release control map which works with the X-Touch extender when it is in control release mode. As I only plan to use two devices with SK2, I shall leave the other device slots empty. Underneath the device slots, there is an indicator that shows how many controls are mapped using the chosen controller maps. SK2 requires a virtual MIDI port to use as a MIDI loopback device, although there is also an option which uses sends to root data, but this option will not be continually supported due to the advantages of using a loopback virtual MIDI port. I have set up a virtual MIDI port, so in the MIDI loopback box I will select the virtual MIDI port I want to use with SK2. Underneath are several further options. The first Retrospective Record Mode offers the SK2 developers take on MIDI Retrospective Record functionality, fully integrated into SK2. If you think you would like to use this, then click the box to Yes. The Sort Controls option should almost always be set to Yes. This ensures that controls loaded into SK2 are sorted according to their sort group set up in the controller map files. It will help to keep all controls like faders, encoders together, even across multiple devices. The Hide Control Tracks option simply hides all SK2 control tracks. These are used by SK2 for routing MIDI, so you cannot see them in the track list or mixer. Whether hidden or not, you can easily make them visible or hide them again using Reaper's Track Manager. The Live CC Feedback button will enable recorded MIDI CC data to be fed back to the controller during playback. This option can be changed at any time from the FB button menu on the main GUI. With the option set, you will get additional sends set up on your project tracks, used to send the MIDI feedback data to the SK2 control track that deals with sending feedback. There are a few other options that can be set in this dialog, but these are not essential for this getting started tutorial. 
Once I'm happy that all the options are set up correctly, I can hit the Create Setup button. This will save these details, so I won't have to enter them again unless I need to change something. Once the setup is complete, after a second or two, the GUI will switch to the main SK2 GUI and I am ready to start using SK2.